Today we are at the new, very expansive Golden Pond residential home in Hopkinton to meet our Hopkinton neighbor, Joan Borowitz. Joan has only lived here in town for one and a half years and already she has many friends in many places within town who speak fondly of her for her love of life and gift of laughter. Joan can also be found playing exquisite piano by ear over here at Golden Pond as she has a true gift of making music and entertaining those around her. She has many intriguing life stories to tell and she often does this funny style as she also worked as one of the first local female Jewish comedians on the Boston comedy scene. Let's sit down and talk with Joan. I have a feeling this half hour is going to fly as there seems so much to talk about. Hi Joan, thank you for having me here to meet with you today and spend a little time talking about your life and I know there are many different directions we can go so I'm looking forward to going there with you and uh, why don't we start by talking about what you're wearing there. It's okay. a beautiful t-shirt. Yes, thank you. This t-shirt, The Dragon and the Pearl, was signed by Valerie Harper, no. mm. who I've interviewed uh, in 1975 when uh, Rhoda's wedding was at its mm -hmm. peak. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I was a, st a drama, st doing some drama stuff at, at Simmons, where I majored in communications, and I went to interview her as mm -hmm. Rhoda, the Hasty Pudding Woman of the Year, mm -hmm. and um, she was just a wonderful, mm -hmm. still is incredibly wonderful person and we spent a lot of time together and then took a lot of pictures together. Natalie Jacobson tied my little Rhoda. I dressed up as Rhoda. Oh, you did. So my uh -huh. comedy route started there. Uh -huh. And then um, I met her 10 years later when she did a one woman Pearl Buck show uh -huh. in mm -hmm. starting in uh, Hasty Pudding in Harvard Square. Mm -hmm. Brought a long way old scrapbook of our pictures and, mm -hmm. and a letter that she wrote me. And she autographed this T-shirt, Dear Joan, We Meet Again, mm. Love Valerie Harper with wow. a Little Heart. Oh, how wonderful. And as you know, she's very, very ill right now. Mm -hmm. Wonderful woman. Mm. Uh, just all the right values. It just always, I've always felt she was a very special mm. person. Mm -hmm. And this little button is from when I performed comedy, which has been... Um, something that sort of runs in my family's DNA <laughs> and I was this is from Catch a Rising Star in New York wow yeah a great and I place. started out doing stand-up comedy in Boston mm -hmm. when there were uh, there was only one other female comedian wow uh -huh. and um, how was, was that a, it was very challenging in those days mm -hmm. I mean it was very wasn't easy being the only woman mm -hmm. but I, I always had wonderful audience response mm -hmm. and um, actually did an open mic night at the Comedy Connection because it was a wish of one of my uh, dearest patients at Children's oh. Hospital mm -hmm. where I worked in the cardiac intensive care unit mm -hmm. and one day about he his parents and family my friends and my family packed the Comedy Connection mm -hmm. I was supposed to do what they called in those days a type 5 I did like <laughs> 45 minutes and got a standing ovation wow. and went on unbeknownst and unplanned to me to become a, a stand-up comic uh, uh -huh. in wow. Boston, New York. What a great moment to mm -hmm. begin with. Could you give us a little sample of some of well, your I, comedy? I used to do a lot of impressions. <laughs> I did all sorts of voices for the Larry Glick show. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And since I've been here uh, living at Golden Pond, I uh, do a pretty good Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> So I say, hello, this is Joan Borowitz at Golden Pond. The loons, the loons, Norman. You're my knight in shining armor. It also doubles as a very good Rose Kennedy impression. <laughs> when in a pinch. Well, that's a very resourceful way to look at it. Wow, that's wonderful. Do you uh, get an opportunity to share a little bit of uh, impersonations wherever you might be? Pretty much. Uh, on the streets of Hopkinton, yeah, say, much. we I'm might expect you. pretty much a, a sort of a sit-down comedian now. A sit-down comedian, very good. But uh, uh, comedy is definitely in my, yeah. in my, in my blood, mm -hmm. and music is another thing uh -huh. that I'm uh -huh. really fascinated with. I play a lot of piano by ear, oh, which is uh -huh. a... I can literally translate virtually anything I hear. Wow. 
and onto piano. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite song to play? A lot of Beatles. I'm very ah, still into yes. the Beatles. The Lots Beatles. of favorite songs. A great period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how did you get started playing by ear? Did you just discover when you went to the well, piano? Well, I was very young. Um, I, was, I had a, a Russian piano teacher mm -hmm. and just couldn't quite make the um, playing with music, reading by music. And um, a lot of musicians, I have friends that are musicians, um, play by ear. I mean, Paul McCartney doesn't read music. Not mm -hmm. that I'm comparing myself <laughs> to Paul. Um, but um, a lot of mm -hmm. musicians are able to Mm -hmm. who have a good ear, mm -hmm. have a very good ear. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was something that, that my uncle was very good at. He mm -hmm. could, he's an amazing pianist. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, it sounds like you also are uh, quite amazing in your piano as well as your gift of comedy. I was wondering if you could share maybe a, a favorite moment of making music, uh, sharing music with others in your life? Uh, I don't know if I have one favorite No, <laughs> Many. Um, I like playing here at Golden Pond. Yeah. I play everywhere. I've, I play, hmm. um, I've played for years in nursing homes, hospital, oh, wow. um, restaurants, mm -hmm. anywhere where there's a piano. Uh -huh. yeah. I've played in Newton at restaurant. I've played, I sort of play anywhere there's a piano. Mm. Uh -huh. You find each other. I find that music and comedy are sort of the universal healers. Wow. And mm -hmm. um, that there's something very centering mm -hmm. about music, very soothing. I know that I've always loved music, mm -hmm. and as has our, our whole family mm -hmm. and all of my friends. I know a lot of musicians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm very drawn to that. Mm -hmm. I also uh, have been, I uh, was born in, in Shaker Heights mm -hmm. and came up to here. I mean, came went to uh, born in Boston, raised in Shaker Heights, uh, okay. and uh, went to a little tiny Quaker boarding school when I was 17 Wow! in Barnesville, Ohio, mm -hmm. which makes Hopkinton look like Times Square. Imagine a that. Tiny little, tiny, <laughs> tiny little town, sort of like Walton's Mountain. Oh, and then, um, How many in your classroom? There was 25 students in our mm -hmm. graduating class mm -hmm. and 100 students in the entire high school. Wow, it was a little imagine. tiny, tiny farm. Mm -hmm. It literally was Barnesville, and they were, it mm -hmm. was very sweet. Mm -hmm. And um, the biggest excitement was the pumpkin festival. <laughs> and then I moved up here to Boston to go to Simmons, and my roommate, um, who I'm still in touch with, was a very, uh, um, very incredible fashion model who wow. now has her own business in mm -hmm. Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And we both majored in communications. Um, and I was this little tiny um, Quaker dressed in, <laughs> in you know, overalls and, and um, plaid shirts, and she was wearing platform shoes and everything. Wow. And so we were quite the pair. Yes. And <laughs> we both used our communications degrees in various ways. Mm. Did you, would you say you learned a little from each other? Oh, definitely. Uh -huh. We're definitely She's wearing overalls and platforms platform shoes maybe it's sort of a Marianne Rota <laughs> situation in and of itself uh -huh. oh. and then um, <laughs> and I have many friends all over the country and, and have been uh, um, I've done things for all over Larry Glick show oh I was okay. I did all uh. the celebrity impressions for mm -hmm. Larry Glick wow um, did stand-up comedy in Boston and New York mm -hmm. and also was a one woman comedian who went out and started hosting and developing um, alternative uh, women's comedy oh, clubs. Wow. Uh -huh. and one at Sterling's, which was a restaurant near Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. One at um, the Casablanca mm -hmm. in Harvard Square. Mm -hmm. And sort of um, went around just having a great time. Mm -hmm. One so time I performed in uh, somewhere in New Hampshire to an all near Montreal to an all-French speaking audience <laughs> who probably didn't understand a word. No, you weren't speaking French. Mm. <laughs> I am bilingual. I you speak are. Spanish. Oh, okay. And, I think um, I thought I heard a few words out in the I hall do there. speak, yeah. yeah, I do mm -hmm. also speak, I used to be fluent in, in um, French languages also are run in our 
Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting to you. Yeah. Well, it certainly sounds that you have paved the way for women in terms of sharing comedy, the art of comedy out there. And you have made many interesting connections with the music that you have shared in different uh, kinds of places with people of different walks of life. Yeah. And um, I know that you also have worked as uh, in the hospitals uh, mm -hmm. with people with elderly and children mm -hmm. as well and in helping them. And in public relations, writing. Mm -hmm. I've published articles about working in the cardiac ICU at Children's. Ah, okay. um, Something you were able to witness there? Oh yes, mm -hmm. I, was, I worked there for five years mm -hmm. and was promoted and um, pretty much, um, uh, well the cardiac surgeons used to tell people that the unit couldn't run without me, I don't know about that, but very devoted mm -hmm. to the children and their family and the, mm -hmm. the families and nurses mm -hmm. and doctors and was trained as a as a, a cardiac sort of medical coordinator. I didn't mm -hmm. do hands-on nursing, but pretty much things that these days would not be uh, probably done mm -hmm. by someone who was not in the nursing field. A lot of learning about different, what kind of blood types you had mm -hmm. to order for certain cardiac procedures, being in charge of inspecting the crash card, wow. all sorts of things, mm -hmm. and also being at the bedside. So you'd walk into work each day and with a cup of coffee and maybe six kids, mm -hmm. babies. They were all on respirators when mm -hmm. they had their chests mm -hmm. open and they'd be doing internal cardiac massage. So I would take care of the parents and, the, and help the nurses mm -hmm. and surgeons. It was a very gratifying job and I, mm -hmm. I learned a lot about life and mm -hmm. how precious it is and mm -hmm. about Bonding, I still hear from the families of some of the wow. children. Uh -huh. that, and I left there, in, I think it was about 1982, but I still mm -hmm. hear from My families. goodness, yeah, it sounds like you. That was my favorite, favorite job. Mm -hmm. I adore children, mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. have. I remember being a child and, mm -hmm. and always, uh, my mother used to say that even when I was like three, I would always want to go to, to uh, visit babies, and, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've always had a very mm -hmm. strong maternal instinct, and there's a picture of me somewhere too, rolling around a, a little monkey in a, in a carriage. So <laughs> very maternal, and I, I also so. very very have a lot of elderly friends, friends from all ages, and mm -hmm. worked with the elderly also mm -hmm. at the Deaconess, mm -hmm. and in PR, writing, comedy. Mm -hmm. So wow, uh, so many different, and also being a Quaker. Being a Quaker has a, as well. Is sort of a different spin on life. Mm -hmm. I mean, my philosophy definitely stands with the Quaker um, mm -hmm. philosophy, which is basically um, a, sort of a simple way of life mm -hmm. and and um, and having equality. You know, mm -hmm. the person who sweeps the floor is just as important as mm -hmm. there's no hierarchy right. in Quakerism. Mm -hmm. But, um, so you bring that out equal. to the world. Well, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm sure that's true of any of many faiths, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's particularly noted. No, Quakers are notorious for social justice mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. peace activism, and um, and uh, and uh, they're I, you know having friends. Is that? Friends Being friends to F. everyone? Actually, they're, it's called the Re Religious Society of Friends, ah. the capital F. Ah, okay. And yeah, so just... That's what I've heard about you in Hopkinton, um, that you have many friends in different places mm -hmm. in just the one and a half year you've yeah. been here already. I have. Uh, here at Golden Pond, I have many friends, and, and out in the greater Hopkinton community, I've made mm -hmm. quite a few friends. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, one of them, it turns out used to live in Cleveland, oh, and now lives uh -huh. in Hopkinton. Knew my boyfriend from when I was my sixteen. My wow. Well, yeah, <laughs> she worked here when the um, when the Golden Goose had children, the mm -hmm. daycare, yes. and right. so I often have met through my other Hopkinton friends. Mm -hmm. um, have met people outside in the greater community, mm -hmm. and. Um, I really love this area. I mm -hmm. love living in the country. Mm -hmm. I also like getting back to the city. And mm -hmm. it's very 
I love the trips that we take all over. Do you mean Boston? Well, I like going back to Cambridge mm -hmm. and, yeah. and seeing Harvard Square. And it's very different. It's, it's almost like culture shock mm -hmm. because Harvard Square is so different than Hoffington. Mm -hmm. Harvard yeah. Square, you can, you're, if you don't see someone with a pink mohawk and a nose <laughs> ring, um, you're missing something. Oh. And it's been around forever. And that's where I, I've been in Cambridge and Boston since. 73 mm. and I've been out here for a year and a half mm -hmm. so going back and forth you get the best of both worlds mm. it's not that far away yeah and mm -hmm. I love being in the country there's something very serene yeah. about living in this environment it, that's very I find mm -hmm. very very peaceful mm -hmm. have you had chance to explore some of the uh, different settings outdoors uh, oh. the parks or oh yes because yeah. we we go out um, on a daily basis mm -hmm. yeah. um, who, you know, with uh, activities department, fabulous, and we go to all sorts of lakes and farms and, and alpaca farms and oh. <laughs> stores and, and trips wonderful to mm -hmm. Maine and, and New Hampshire and the beach. And, mm -hmm. and, um, I, and I love Hopkinton State Park. That's one of my yeah. favorite places. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely setting. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say, since moving here not that long ago, what is one of the things that you especially like about this small town? I just love the fact that it is a small town. It is a small town still. And I love the fact that it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, there are lakes and ponds and mm -hmm. gardens and, and it's so peaceful. When I was living in Cambridge, as much as mm -hmm. I like Harvard Square, I was living right near a hospital, Mount Auburn Hospital, yes. and mm -hmm. all you ever heard were ambulances. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And some of them were usually for me. Oh. But um, <laughs> I've, since I've been here, um, <laughs> you know, I've been very Not happy, hearing them as much. Healthy, mm -hmm. really enjoying oh, that's life, good to hear. peaceful life. Well, uh, aside from Hopkinton, is there a place in the world that you uh, think of uh, very fondly? Maybe one of your favorite spots? One of my favorite spots is California. Ah, uh, yeah, and, uh, the other side of Yeah, California and New York, so we're mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. um, definitely I, I miss California a lot and New York and, and um, on the water, the coast well, of California. I, I, I had, I haven't been to California in years, but um, I have a dear childhood friend that lives in Malibu mm -hmm. and um, you know, and uh, I loved California when I went when I used to visit mm -hmm. because I'm I've I very have always loved celebrities, you know, yeah. being and uh -huh. um, and I've been friendly with quite a few very famous people. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a part of your life. I've as always well. I mean, ever since mm -hmm. I was a little kid, I would read Tiger Beat magazine and be <laughs> obsessed with Davy Jones. From oh the Monkey. yes, I remember I mean, Davy myself. And, yeah, I mean Davy. <laughs> And um, and actually, there's a picture online of Valerie Harper with Davy Jones. How about that? And I have a comedian <laughs> friend who used to say, "It's a small world, but I wouldn't want to have to paint it." Um, That's Stephen Wright, brilliant comedian. Good words. Yes. Uh huh. There's a lot to the world. Mm. Seems like you've been painting it in beautiful ways, really, on both sides of the coast, uh, and in the things that you've been doing and the friends that you've made. You know, friendship is part of uh, the Quaker philosophy, but it, it also seems uh, part of your life yeah, throughout I, the years. That's always been true. I've that. always had many beloved lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. continuing to make friends here in Hopkinton yeah. and have some adventures here as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that is uh, a good thing to hear about your life. And I know you said you have done writing. Yes. Uh, you've written about your work. Uh, have you right. written other kinds? Well, of I've done some writing for local businesses mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. and. I've done some, I've published um, an article that's coming out um, in, uh, I think, in the, in the fall, promoting the new edition for Golden Pond oh. in Simmons Magazine. Oh, wonderful. And, uh -huh. Which will be a great shock to my uh, fellow Simmons people because they haven't heard from me in a long time. Uh -huh. And, um, and uh, I also wanted to honor Valerie Harper's life. Mm in that magazine because meeting her and being with her was it has been a very 
she still is a real inspiration to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I mean, I've known many, many celebrities, but I've never seen such a wonderful woman, and I want to wish her well. Mm -hmm. As you know, she's very ill. Yes. Going deeper, what is it uh, more specifically about Valerie that you uh, mm -hmm. learn from observing her Just and to cherish her? the moment. To cherish the moment. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that Live is in the day. Mm -hmm. She's giving a great message. Mm -hmm. She's got great courage. Yeah. Very courageous woman. Mm -hmm. no, that's an important observation to share out. And mm -hmm. So, and then and she, so she gives a great message about um, kindness mm -hmm. and embracing ourselves, including our faults, and and just being just giving it to, to mm -hmm. other people. Uh huh. Oh, wow, well, that's great. You had opportunity to meet her and to extract that from her. Uh, you mentioned that you've observed music and comedy, laughter, uh, as being kind of uh, together, parallel, maybe uh, art and resource refuge for us uh, in terms of healing. Um, and uh, I know that I have heard the quote uh, that we are all healing en route uh, to some kind of illumination in our mm -hmm. life, you know, however you want to interpret healing, that we all do it to some degree. Uh, well, I had a, it's interesting you should bring that up because I had a, a very wonderful Quaker, uh, dear um, sort of mother figure, um, in addition to my own mother. and. Um, her, she had a vision about healing gardens, oh, and okay. uh, and uh, we have them sort of all over. This yes. one here, mm -hmm. right here mm -hmm. at Golden Pond. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So and do you get a chance to go out? Oh yeah, normally mm -hmm. I go out all the time mm -hmm. yeah. in the healing garden. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, what makes this one special here? Uh, it's, it's, it's very. For me, I'm a very deeply spiritual person, yes. and mm -hmm. I think that um, that um, that the the fact that I got here, and there was always this beautiful scene from the gazebo, and mm -hmm. so many gardens and butterflies and birds, uh -huh. and from such a mm -hmm. serene spot that I was already here. Mm hmm. Well, that can often be missed by people coming in and out, and um, not knowing. Uh, about looking for such things and uh, certainly something that you can uh, offer as a writer uh, here I, mm -hmm. may, perhaps in the future that will be something to yeah. bring to attention I'm not sure we know about that that uh, Golden Pond has a healing garden well I don't know that it's an official Golden Pond <laughs> thing it's my, um, there are a lot of, of, of people here that um, were touched by uh, the story about having a place to go yeah. to meditate or to pray and mm -hmm. enjoy the beauty of nature and um, gardens and mm -hmm. um, plants and flowers and birds. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why I feel I'm where I should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, your description alone is very enticing and bringing some peace to the interview as well. So That's great. We have a few minutes left, and we have two minutes left, mm -hmm. and uh, there are so many directions, um, so many uh, different... Well, in uh, the two minutes, I'd like to say that Golden Pond has been incredible for me. Yeah. I came uh -huh. here extremely ill, uh -huh. and in a year and a half, I actually came here very ill, and in a year and mm -hmm. a half, I've had an incredible journey to becoming a really healthy Person. I guess so. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, you present as radiant and mm. very well, and you have a lot of light coming out from you. And I wanted to uh, ask the favor if you could just play a bit of piano before we end our sure. interview today. One more bit of uh, talent that you could share with us today. And thank you so much for thank this you, interview. Thank you, Cheryl. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure with you too. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. Yes, we're HCAM TV, but movies also? Dive In Drive In is a new program featuring the HCAM staff's favorite B-movies. Check our schedule at HCAM.TV for the next showing of some of the more forgotten films, black and white or color. Join Mike Terosian and myself as we introduce and give you some interesting facts about the cast and crews of classic movies. We hope you'll enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear. Hello, I'm Cheryl Peralt, co-producer of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, an HCAM series honoring poetry, story, and song that takes place on the third Saturday each month before a live audience. Guest features share their art, followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Others come to listen and be part of this warm and welcoming studio and to wake up a bit to arts and to life. You're welcome to join us and to tune in or visit our website for our weekly program. Hope you can join us. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive in Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interest. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at HCAM.TV for movie days and showtimes.